what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here in this video i'm just going to discuss who i think the killer should be in a possible fourth sequel to the original screen film that wes craven directed kevin williamson wrote uh the film that kind of brought the horror genre back into relevancy in the late 90s when we were getting a, getting a series of bad sequels from the from the big three michael freddie and jason uh, Scream kind of put the horror genre back on the map in the late 90s. It kind of revitalized it and saved it from the downward spiral. It was on and brought it. was a breath of fresh air at the time of its release. Uh, Scream is, in fact, my favorite horror film. I think I've said that several times on this channel. Uh, but I want to get into something in regards to what I would do with Scream 5. That's if Spyglass Media, who is the one, they're the, they're the company who are responsible, going to be responsible for the upcoming Scream film that we get. Whether or not that's going to be a sequel to Scream 4 or not, that is yet to be seen. But I feel like everything's being tight-lipped and they're going to make a big announcement. It, it, it is going to end up being a sequel to Scream 4. I think everything's just kind of being kept under wraps. And the main stars, Nev Campbell, everybody, uh, David Arquette. Um, I want to kind of just give a shout out to uh, Zach Cherry. <laughs> I believe I'm saying your name correctly. I apologize if I have not said your name correctly. I don't have it in front of me right now. I also don't have my cell phone by me, which sucks. Uh, he he has a YouTube channel. He puts out a lot of Scream content. He's the one who kind of put me in this mindset. I think that what a lot of the main stars are doing is they're kind of just downplaying it until Spyglass Media is ready to make an official announcement where they'll announce that Kevin Williamson is back to write. They'll announce the director and they'll announce the return of the three main stars, uh, Nev Campbell, David Arquette, and Courtney Cox. Uh, but getting into the topic of today's video, if it is in fact a sequel to Screen 4, I think the killer of Screen 5 should be Judy Hicks. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Screen 4, I feel like a lot of people coming out, coming out of Screen 4 felt that Judy Hicks was a bit off. They felt that Judy Hicks could be a possible villain in the future, or Judy Hicks herself, she came across as if she was the villain in, in Screen 4. It's like she was working with the killers or something. Something about her just gave off this vibe, like... She has like a history with Sydney or something, and especially that one scene where she's in the dark and she seems kind of bothered that Sydney didn't remember who she was. Now, every time I watch this movie, I'm thinking to myself, what is it that, why is it that she wants Sydney to remember her so badly? What is it that went on between these two? And then what I started thinking about was the fact of uh, something I came up with and some other fan scripts and everything. They brought me to this conclusion here in a theory of mine. Wes Craven revealed in an interview that Neil Prescott had died off screen from a heart attack. What does that have to do with Judy Hicks? I'm going to get into that right now. So in my in my ideal screen five, we find out that uh, Judy Hicks was the one responsible for the death of Neil Prescott. How and why? I'm going to get into that right now. Uh, the opening kill of Screen 5, if I were to have it done my way, the opening kill would take place, uh, it would be a flashback, of course, or not not a flashback, but just set in set in a time that Screen, Screen 5 itself would not be taking place in. Screen 5, I feel, should be set in the year 2000, uh, 2020, uh, the same year as ours. Uh, maybe this flashback or this this past sequence that we have to open a movie is set in since neil prescott died in between 2000 and 2010 according to west craven he died off screen apparently had a heart attack let's put this flashback in 2007 and then perhaps neil's death we come to find out is what actually led sydney to write that book out of darkness uh so neil prescott has his heart attack in 2007 and then we come to find out in the opening of this film we have a rainy night uh we have some terrifying music uh they set the mood we zoom into a a house the door is broken uh wide open we go into the house and we see like some glass or shards of glass thrown around on the floor a few broken pieces of furniture and in the corner we have a dead neil prescott now from there uh, what what is going to happen is the movie will play out and we come to find out that the person who was responsible for Niels Prescott's death all that time ago was in fact Judy Hicks and she is the killer in this new screen film now what is her motive uh, to my this is something that I just came up with out of the movie Judy uh, let's say that Neil Prescott when Maureen Prescott had died let's say that Neil Prescott he coped in it in the way that was similar to what Maureen did. Uh, Maureen slept around and perhaps Neil being unable to cope with the loss of his wife, he started sleeping around with a bunch of women in Woodsboro. 
one of those women ended up being Judy's mother. Now, their relationship, of course, did not end on good terms because Neil realized that sleeping around with this woman was not the way to cope with the loss of his wife. Every, all those times he was telling Sydney he was going out of town for business, he was going out of town, but he would come back early sometimes to meet up with Judy's mother and these other women he was having an affair with to get over the loss of his wife. Uh, but he comes to his senses, realizes this isn't this isn't a good way to cope. He leaves Judy's wife. Now, Judy's wife, uh, we come to find out, Judy's wife had actually, or or Judy's mom, rather, Judy's mom. Judy's mother had lost her husband a few years prior, so her and Neil kind of just bonded off of their own grieving still. She's still in the grieving process as well, all these years later. And Neil kind of was like a safe spot for her. He made her feel alive again. He brought that happiness back to her. And then the second he leaves, that's when she finally goes off the deep end entirely. She, her health deteriorates. Uh, she was already un, unhinged and a little bit off over the death of her husband uh, still so many years later. And then to have her heart broken by another man, uh, it kind of just sets her off the deep end. Uh, not, not even that. It's just the fact that she has a lot of health issues that arose from the loss of her husband. Uh, and then those health issues are only heightened when it seems like another man is leaving her. Nobody wants her. Uh, her health deteriorates. Uh, Judy's life is, of course, affected by this because she lives with the woman. And then, of course, all this stress and all this bad turmoil going on with Judy's mother leads to Judy's mother passing away when Judy's in high school. Uh, now, Judy knew Neil Prescott was having an affair with her mother. She never addresses Sydney about this because her and Sydney were not close in high school. The only thing that, that we know occurred with these two is that they were in a play, the, a Peter Pan play. But we come to find out uh, later on in the film that Judy actually always had a grudge against Neil Prescott. Couldn't bring herself to confront him about it, though, until so until 2007. So she arranged a time to go meet him. He agreed. And when they went o when she went over, uh, they talked, they discussed. She came out to him about how uh, how he how she feels that he ruined her childhood because of the fact that she lost her mother because of because of his inability to cope with his own wife's passing, uh, and then taking it out on a woman who was already grieving, and then sent her off the deep end, which then affected Judy's life, and then led to her mother passing away from it all. Uh, now, the death of a loved one, everyone copes differently. So Judy's mother, of course, did not cope well with the passing of her husband. And then that combined with Neil Prescott, who was kind of like a safe zone to make her forget about all that. That's that just kind of set everything off and everything was downward from that point. When Neil finally came to his senses, Judy's mother, unfortunately, did not because she was already too far gone, given the fact that she was already a little bit mentally off from the passing of her husband. So with all that in mind, Judy blames Neil Prescott for the passing of her mom. And she wants Neil Prescott to just basically suffer at this point. She not only is she willing to go confront him now at this point, but she came there to kill him. Uh, but before she got a chance to kill him, she pulls a knife out on him or something. Neil is overwhelmed with so much with so much emotion and so much fear in regards to what Judy is about to do. And he's about to lose his life. He ends up having a heart attack from it. Judy never gets to do anything, and that's why nothing was ever investigated. Judy didn't directly kill Neil Prescott, but she was the cause of his heart attack. She was the cause of his heart attack, and everything that was about to happen to him is what led up to the heart attack. That fear, that growing fear in him is what led to the heart attack. Now, so many years later, Judy finally decides to say, Judy is a little bit off herself too. She's a little bit unhinged. Uh, she decides that she wants to take this anger out that she still harbors for Neil Prescott. She feel like he can't be completely gone until she takes out his daughter. Now she wants to take she wants to take out Sydney. So she starts another killing spree. She starts going after uh, going after Sydney. Sydney's friends, of course, going after Gail, Dewey, and we end up finding out that it's Judy in the end of the film. She reveals to Sydney why we find out. Sydney finds out that her father did in fact die from a heart attack but there was more to it than that uh judy was the cause of the heart attack in a way because she came over to that house to threaten his life and 
she was she was in the process about to kill Neil Prescott and that fear overwhelmed him so much that he had a heart attack. She explains to Sydney the process of how Neil was having an affair with Judy's mother. Uh, it's just a whole a whole big emotional sequence. I that's what I would do for Scream Five. We find out that Judy Hicks is the killer, and we find out some things about Neil Prescott and his backstory as well, and what actually led to him dying. That's what I would do for a Scream Five. And then that would all bridge into a Scream Six, where Sydney has now finally gone off the deep end, and she is the final ghost face. And we end the series with Sydney, uh with Sydney being the final killer. Now, in regards to how Sydney becomes the killer, I'm gonna save that for another video. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. I know it's kind of a little bit all over the place. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future now, with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video and in the description or in the comment section rather i will have a link to the facebook group that i have started uh this link to the facebook group will be to the group where you can get updates on jeepers creepers and talk to the gentleman who is in contact with victor salvas named stacy langenkamp there's an announcement post he's tagged in it if you want any updates on jeepers creepers join this group with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video